You've just come off the back of some pretty strong results in the third quarter. How is that teeing you up for 2018? What's your outlook for next year? Well, I think we are uh, very bothered about 2018. We look at uh, you know, the demands of GDP growth in China, in Europe, and the United States particularly, especially after the tax reform that has been introduced two weeks ago. And more importantly, we, we see there is also agreement from the OPEC producers will give a very strong, uh, sustainable outlook for crude oil price for the next year. So uh, uh, we look at 2018. If it's, uh, if it's not better than 2017, we'll be more or less as equal to 20, 2017 performance. And what's your strategy here in China? I know you've, you've, you've visited the country many times. Sabic has been involved in China for many years. What is the focus now? How do you expand your footprint in the Chinese market? Well, China is, is a strategic market for us, not only in terms of materials and products marketing, but also for growth strategy. We have really a very strong partnership with Sinopec and existing uh, JVs. We look at an opportunity to expand this JV and even further come up with a new projects to strengthen Sabic footprints. We look at China also in opportunities not only to uh, grow, also to strengthen our global positions. We are very excited about the Chinese government's strategy to move from being uh, a low quality product producer uh, country to mid and high end. We look at uh, strengthen their innovation strategy, which is really fits with SABIC growth, corporate governance, and these are all sustainabilities, and all these are really very fundamental for Shabik really strategy. But the, the, the Chinese also want to be self-sufficient in petrochemicals uh, in the next few decades. So that poses a challenge, doesn't it, for Shabik? Well, it's an opportunity as well, because that's why we want to be a local player. We want to be part of how can we supply China has become self-sufficient being a local player. And that's clearly part of our strategy. When we enter, enter in any markets, we don't really behave like really uh, foreign investors. We behave like a local players. We try to serve the local market demands, and I'm pretty sure we will help China to have a self-sufficiency on their core product that they need. You've been diversifying the business. You've got a cash pile that you've set aside for acquisitions. What are you eyeing in terms of deals? Well, we, we, uh, we have three business units that uh, we, after the structure in 2015, we have the Bitkim, which is the largest business we have. We have the specialty and agri-nutrients. And we do have each one of those uh, business line has clear strategy from an organic point of view and also from an acquisitions point of view. And I think especially on the specialty side and Bitkim side, we are entertaining options uh, in North America and China and also part of Europe. And we are excited about those opportunities, and hopefully in 2018 some of them will materialize. Would companies like Clariant or Lanxus be potential well, acquisition targets? Well, it will be premature to determine which one, but I can assure you there are companies in our radar screen that fits our portfolio and fits our strategic growth, and we're trying to see uh, where is those company and how they can really uh, fuel our growth strategy and bring the value that we need to bring to the market and also to our customer base. Briefly on the U.S., there's an opportunity around gas. How crucial is that for you? Very crucial. I mean, U.S., again, like China, is very important. Used to be our market. Now it's our base also to grow. We look at North America as a way to fuel our growth for North America, for also Latin America, and in the same time strengthen our position in Europe. And that's why we started really exporting ethane from the Gulf to our crackers in U.K., and we think U.S. is going to be its part of our growth strategy. And we do look at options beside our uh, you know, joint ventures with ExxonMobil, which is we are building the largest cracker right now, 1.8 million tonne of Italy. I know you wouldn't be drawn on the oil price, but are you comfortable with the levels they are now? Well, I am always comfortable with sustainable, stable price, regardless how is it, because this is good for us as a producer and, more importantly, good for our customers.